welcome everybody to this session on growing your practice or your school or your retreat or whatever your business is using the power of social proof. Now, social proof is a very interesting thing. Um, I suppose I first came across this um, many years ago when I was looking at ways of creating um, info products such as live workshops which i know that many of you have been to and uh, things like that we used to do back in the olden days when we were all allowed to gather and and do things together in the same room um, hopefully we're starting to get back to that point now but social proof was something that i've i've often looked at and it is a concept in marketing that i think that we can harness um in our field in order to grow our businesses successfully. So as you'll have seen on the invitation to this session, we're looking at social proof and how it can be used to grow your practice. But of course, also, I wanted to make it very clear that anybody is welcome, anybody in this field is welcome, whether you are running a school and running courses or whether you're running a retreat or a clinic or whatever it is, or even products and so on, whatever stage you're at and whatever part of this sector you're working in i'm really aiming for this information to be really applicable to you so i may use words such as your clients or your patients or what have you but take that as shorthand to read anybody that you deal with any customer of yours whomever it is that's coming to you for a for, for your treatments for your trainings for your retreats or whatever it is so please don't run away just with the idea that this is only applicable to people with patients because it's not it's really generic um that's because the information we're looking at today is really super generic um however instead of just coming at you like some sort of marketing guru which i'm certainly not uh, my expertise is in the field of complementary medicine and everything i've learned and observed over my last 30 years of, of heading up the complementary medical association so i'm coming at this with industry expertise and that's where my sort of uh, my niche is if you like so i'm not going to be giving you generic solutions because Frankly, you could just go online and read that and, you know, whoopee do it's so what it's no, you know, it's just, it's just not really worth your while doing it because what, what I think we need and what I think is so valuable about these sessions is that we can come together, we can discuss as fellow professionals, and we can talk about things that are directly relevant to our very unusual profession. Um, there's not really nothing else like it out there. So I think that these sessions are very valuable from that perspective. So anyway, without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say hello to the people that just came in uh, a few moments ago, Karen and Hara, and hi Sam, and uh, hi Linda. So yes, hi everybody, hi Martha. It's just so lovely to see you all, thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm going to start by sharing my screen and I will do a little test just to make sure that, uh, there we go, that's where I want to be, to make sure that you can ideally see the presentation and also ideally see what I'm doing with you as well. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is tell me, could you just give me a thumbs up just to tell me if you can see the presentation and you can see us at the moment. Great stuff. Now, if I just do this, I've lost my cursor, that, there we go, it's back again. If I do this, okay, um, what I'd like to do is, can you see me in the, in the top corner? Just give me a thumbs up when I was doing, yeah, okay, great. So that seems to be doing, doing the trick. Okay, lovely. So here we go. Harnessing the power of social proof to build your business. Now, um, where I'm coming at with all of this, as always, is from a completely evidence based perspective. So you know me by now, um, <laughs> over the years, uh, what you'll know is that everything I speak about, whether it's the nitty gritty of complementary medicine and what we actually do with our clients, um, or right the way through to marketing and um, practice development, course development, any, any kind of business growth in this field. To me, I think I'd be doing a disservice if I was just sort of plucking things out of thin air and saying, well, try that, it might be a good idea, or try that, it might be a good idea. Everything I bring you is based on really robust marketing research, okay? So this is coming from the science-based perspective. Science plays a massively key role in marketing, 
especially the science of psychology, as I know you will appreciate. As you know, also, I've created tutorials for you on the psychology of marketing and branding, on using these to grow your practice or school, your retreat or your natural health products or services business. Now, all of those previous tutorials really drilling down to the science of, of what we need to be doing in order to grow our work, Though all of those videos are available to you completely free of charge over on YouTube under the Complementary Medical Associations YouTube channel. Now, just a word to the wise. I know some of you will have heard me say this previously, but um, don't go to YouTube and type in the CMA as you might logically do, because if you do, you'll go to the Country Music Association channel. And as I always say, I know it's a really good and healthy and wonderful thing to be binging Dolly Parton videos, but it's not going to get you very far in your practice development and so on. So go to YouTube and type in complimentary, C-O-M-P-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-R-Y, medical association and you will get to the right place. I want to flip over there in a bit um, after this presentation and show you a few things that you may not be aware of and a few new bits and pieces, bells and whistles we've added for you in the last few months. Um, so if you haven't been over there for a while, I want to show you a few bits and pieces. Right, okay. Now, however, going back to the science of psychology, um, however, social proof is one of the most important forms of psychological phenomena that you must harness to truly grow a sustainable, successful business that enables you to thrive personally and professionally. Because I believe this is so important. Um, we talk about work-life balance and it's given the last couple of years that we've all had to endure, um, I think it's really evident to us that quality of life is just paramount and we don't have quality of life if we can't get our work-life balance sorted out and and literally balanced so this is something that I, I often like to talk about thriving personally and professionally in our work in fact my master's dissertation research and dissertation was called practicing to thrive and thriving to practice uh, which is where I looked at those elements that enables some practitioners to dramatically be hugely successful personally and professionally, whereas the majority of practitioners struggle and came out with some really interesting information. My dissertation is available if you would like to read it, if you need some bedtime reading, if you are an insomniac, you are more than welcome to take a look at it. Um, but nevertheless, all joking aside, there is a lot of really useful information in that dissertation. And I've been using that to run a lot of these um, tutorials as well for you, because, you know, communication is paramount. And thriving person and professionally in this field is paramount otherwise we burn out as you as you know and totally appreciate so let's just talk about social proof this is something i wanted to just sort of go into and just give you a few kind of pointers and ideas to set this set the scene if you like this is a social proof advert from back in the day cooperative tea is cooperative tea is filling the nation's teapot the nation's teapot it's not just next door neighbor's teapot or your auntie's teapot it's the nation's teapot it's obviously a huge great teapot there that's obviously something that's had to she's had to climb up the stairs in order to put the tea in it's such a massive teapot because it's filling the nation's teapot so this is really this is social proof in action the person reading that advert subconsciously would have um looked at that advert and the message they would have taken on board is that cooperative tea is obviously the tea that everybody's drinking or if everybody's drinking it there must be a reason why so this is sort of social proof from back in the day do you remember also the old adverts eight out of ten cat owners said their cats preferred it which advert was that um i believe it was whiskers drop me some notes in the chat box if i've got that wrong or even if you can think of any other social proof adverts there's also of course that's why mums go to iceland all the mums are going to iceland because they're saving money you know that that's the whole point of iceland it's convenient 
are saving money. So that's why mums, all the mums, all the mums are going to Iceland, eight out of 10 cat owners. They then had to change this advert. Um, it was, they then had to change it funnily enough to eight out of 10 cat owners, but it was in brackets, who expressed a preference, close brackets, said their cats prefer it because they were made to do that by the Advertising Standards Authority. <laughs> nice to see the ASA having a go at anybody else who isn't complimentary medicine for once, I have to say. Anyway, more social proof attitude um, adverts. Come alive, you're in the Pepsi generation. Now I'm just gonna move this uh, headshot thing over there because I want to read this to you. It's really interesting from the social proof ad structure and it, it, it's all helpful. Um, it says here, I don't know if you can read it, but I'll read it to you if not. Get to where the good times are just follow the pepsi generation and pepsi follows naturally pepsi tastes so cold and bold clean and quenching more spring to it more swing to it no wonder it's the official drink of a whole generation of people like you what a brilliantly constructed piece of copy that has all of the hallmarks of david ogilvy all over it he was the master if you if you have some time please go grab yourself Ogilvy's book. It's called Ogilvy on Advertising. He was the master of social proof. He was the genius of helping us to understand that people like us are buying these products, are using these services. Yeah, so it's well worth getting a copy of Ogilvy on Advertising, even though, of course, you know, he's, he's long gone, but the, the concepts in those ads absolutely stand up to this very day. What about this one for social proof? Viceroy's filter the smoke. As your dentist, I would recommend Viceroy's. Now, this is a respected person in society. This is your dentist. This is what we call the halo effect that we're going to come on to in a little bit. But you know, we talk about influencers in this day and age, don't we? Well, your dentist, I mean, if your dentist's telling you to smoke Viceroy's, well, you know, go get yourself a pack of Viceroy's because He's, you know, he's the man, he knows what he's talking, he's a medical man, he's an important man. So there you are, it, you, I know that you get the picture. So social proof is used throughout offline and online marketing. It's a vital tool for us, or especially in this field, where we may well find ourselves occasionally in situations where our audience might not know much about what we actually do. Now, important little aside here for you. I don't know, we all do different things in this group. Okay, so me, for example, when I graduated from my homeopathy training, I came out all bright eyed and bushy tailed. I'd at that point, I'd done this is before I did any extra sort of further training. I mean, all in all, I think I spent seven, eight years or so training, but I, I did my first four years of my training. And I came out all bright eyed and bushy tailed thinking, wow, that's brilliant. I'm a fabulous homeopath. I've gone through this amazing training. Um, and, you know, it's been really, really hardcore. And, you know, I really did a great job and I'm really proud of myself. And um, expecting the public to beat a path to my door, um, wanting to be treated by me. Was I ever wrong? What a cruel and harsh awakening that was. Um, because, of course, you know, you go out and not knowing anything, you say, I'm a homeopath. You stand up and to give talks. Hello, everybody. I'm a homeopath. Expecting everybody to go, ooh, that's good. And everybody's like, you get to see these blank stares. Right. Okay. And I, I, I honestly, I'm not kidding. I, I would have, you know, if somebody said to me to party or something, what is it you do? I'd say, oh, I'm a homeopath. And they say, oh, yeah, that's, that's where you rub those lovely oils on people, isn't it? And I'd be like, oh. No, 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 um, no, not at all. Uh, that's aromatherapy. I do something different. And this is what I do. And I had really lost. Uh, I, in fact, I probably didn't know at this point. I am going back 35 years, some time ago. Um, I, I didn't realize at that time that nobody knew or cared what I did as a practitioner. All people want to know is are you does what you do get them better that's all they want they just want their symptoms resolved that's all they want that's all they care about they don't care how it's done they just want a resolution to their symptoms so the only only caveat to that might be is if somebody has got symptoms they're very uncomfortable they've got dis-ease and 
they may be needle phobic, so they might not necessarily want their symptoms solved by acupuncture, but they don't care who else, you know, who else they see, whether they see somebody, you know, nutritionist, a homeopath, a naturopath, whomever it is, all they want is a cessation or resolution to their symptoms. Okay, I think we'd all agree with that. So this is why we've got to remember that our audience might not necessarily know the nitty gritty about what we actually do and how we do it. And frankly, it doesn't matter that much. Um, it may be though, that if you can get somebody interested in working with you, at that point, you may wish to start to educate them about the way that you work, because I personally find, and I would, I, I know, I'm sure that you, you do as well, that the more a client or a patient or a student or whomever it is knows about the way you work, the more likely they are to get excited by it, uh, to adhere to your recommendations, um, your regime, if you will, um, you will get a better compliancy with your client. Um, that word compliant is, or it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword, isn't it? You know, it's a rule really compliant client, sounds like they're all sort of meek and mild and doing what you tell them. But we're talking about it in terms of, you know, from coming from, at it from a um, health and wellbeing and medical perspective. So we're talking about them sticking to what your recommendations are so that they stand a chance of actually doing really, really well under your care and guidance. So that's the way I'm using the term compliance. So it's better if we can actually help people to understand. And we've got to find ways of helping them so that we can genuinely uh, get them to understand what we do. And this is where social proof comes in. Because quite honestly, you can't expect somebody to magically find their way to your website and then magically expect them to read every single word word for word on your website or in your brochure or however you're doing your 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 publicity it's got to be shorter and sweeter and more targeted than that so that's one of the things we're doing today so first of all Let's just move this up here and out of the way. What is social proof? Social proof is a psychological phenomenon where people observe and assume the actions of others in an attempt to reflect the correct behavior for a given situation. Now, there are some very interesting psychological reasons why we do this. Um, if for those of you who have been on my resilience and positive psychology training course for practitioners, um, you'll remember that we spoke about the really important developmental uh, you know, relevance of fitting in. And if we don't fit in with a group, we actually experience physical pain. Now, there was an evolutionary advantage to this because if you think way back in the day when we lived in tribes perhaps we lived in caves with, with other members of our tribes and we were all working together to survive if there was dis dissension in the tribe and, and one person said actually i don't like the way you guys are all doing this i don't think you should fight off a saber-toothed tiger like that i think you should do something else entirely if there's that dissension and everybody else in the tribe says no actually do you know what you're really wrong out you go off you go, we don't like that approach, we're sticking to our approach. You'd be sent off out into the wild blue yonder to fend for yourself and guess what, you weren't going to last very long. This is why it's a, a really deeply intrinsic, this need to fit in is so ingrained into our neurological structure. So this is why we, this is one of the reasons why social proof works so blooming well and why we've got to harness it. So just a little aside for you, but it is, I think, quite a fascinating thing. This chap is one of my heroes. This is Robert Cialdini. He, his book, uh, Influence the Psychology of Persuasion. Please run out and get it. It is amazing. It's a very, very, it's a page turner. It's a brilliant read. It's incredibly interesting. Um, according to Robert Cialdini, who studied the principle of social proof in depth in his book, influence the psychology of persuasion he says we view a behavior as more correct in a given situation to the degree 
that we see others performing it. So the more people we see doing a particular behavior, the more weight we give to that behavior. That's what Robert is saying here. Robert is um, a professor, I believe he's, he was at LSE. He's now, I believe at University of Arizona, um, but he teaches all over the world and he is the man in, in the field of persuasion. So often in situations where we're uncertain about what to do, we would assume that the people around us, experts, celebrities, friends, etc., have more knowledge about what's going on and what should be done. So we do look at others to take our cues, no matter how subconsciously we do it, it does happen. And for the very, very, very good primal survival reasons, the more we fit in, the better we're going to get to do overall very interesting and as i say go get the book because i know you'll love it and um, it will really change the way that you think about getting your messaging out there okay that's the book so that's that's what you're looking for it's available everywhere um he does have numerous other books out uh, but i would say this is the this is the best one and go for the revised edition okay and as i say it's a huge total page turn it's brilliant it's really interesting so now this is a very interesting chap as well um edward thorndike um his hypothesis was that we make judgments based on our overall impression of somebody um for example we think anything that experts use is great because they are probably more knowledgeable than us in their area of specialization so where does that take us to? We buy products endorsed by celebrities or relevant people because we want to be or look like them. Or um, remember the, the case of the dentist telling us, you know, you should smoke these particular cigarettes because, you know, I'm a dentist and I wear a white coat and I, you know, I do medical things um, in your mouth and <laughs> so I'm the man holding, holding the drill. Um, he, in, in that advert that we looked at just now, had the halo effect we were looking at that dentist with the respect that was accorded back then in the 1940s 50s um that would be the respect that was accorded accorded to dentists and, and medical people because doctors used to advocate smoking as well um as we remember um and uh, so they these were respected people and because they were respected they had what's called the halo effect so we would look up to them and go oh well if they say so it must be a good decision Okay, so we trust user reviews because they have experienced the product or service unlike ourselves. So this is another part of the halo effect. Um, when you, let's say if you were on Amazon and you looked at the reviews uh, before deciding to buy something, or if you were on Goodreads, for example, and you wanted to see what people thought of a particular book before buying it, you can see all of the reviews there. These people have bought the book. It says it's a confirmed purchase. And so as a consequence, um, you can, your, your sort of your, your brain will go tick, tick, tick. OK, these people have actually got this book. They've read it. They liked it. OK, they, they know what they're talking about. So therefore, they've got the halo effect. So there are six types of social proof, some irrelevant to our field, but others are crucial. So we'll just discuss those right now. So there's expert um, social proof. Let's just move this out of the way. Oh, let's just pick that, pick that up. Expert social proof is when an expert in your industry recommends your products or services or is associated with your brand. So that would be really great. So if you, let's say you were doing a particular type of aromatherapy and then somebody like, let's say, Christine Westwood came along and you say, Christine, look, I've got all your books and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working with the essentials you've recommended. Would you maybe give like a little endorsement on my website? And if she has time, she would say, well, yes, yes, of course. Yes, absolutely. So people coming to your site, for example, would say, gosh, wow, Christine Westwood, the leading lady in aromatherapy has said da 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 this person must be really good. So that's that sort of, again, it's a halo effect. So, so that's useful. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we've got things like celebrity. Celebrity social proof is when a celebrity endorses your products um, or treatments or services or whatever it is that you're doing, your courses or what have you. Examples might be an Instagram post or tweet about your product or your service by a celebrity or an influencer. Now, 
quite honestly, if Beyonce came along and said, uh, wow, yeah, you know, I came to see this nutritionist and, and they, you know, just got, they, they made me lose 30 pounds. Well, frankly, you know, you would be doing very, very well if, if that were the case, because, you know, everybody knows who Beyonce is. Um, but the likelihood of that happening is fairly remote, I would say. But is there anybody out there that you know that people could potentially recognize even if it's somebody else in the profession who may be a little bit more exposed than you or they may have a little bit of a, a, a longer standing reputation or things like that um, those are the sorts of people that you could also think about harnessing so they sort of have a celebrity status in in the profession um, but they may not be what we think of as being a celeb you know um, whatever that word means nowadays I'm not sure actually what it does mean because half the time celebrity programs come on TV and I'm thinking who's that <laughs> I'm sure you're the same anyway um, users what about user social proof is when your current users recommend your products and services based on their experiences with your brand examples include praise on social media or positive ratings on review sites and we're going to come on to all of that in a bit but let's just finish off these six types so there's the wisdom of the crowd. Let's just move my, myself up out of the way. The wisdom of the crowd, this type of social proof is when a large group of people is seen to be endorsing your brand. Um, examples include having many customers liking and reviewing your services or thousands of followers on your social media profiles, if that's your bag, if that's what you do. Um, social, I just want to say this to you right now don't make the mistake of running yourself ragged trying to be all things to all people and on all social platforms all the time what the my, my strategy my recommended strategy would be for you is to find out where your audience hangs out and use those social platforms so for example in our field Facebook is still like it or loathe it. Uh, I've got a love hate relationship with it. Um, Facebook is still quite relevant to us in many ways um, because it is quite a good way of getting information out there um, and also getting exposure to friends of friends. Um, use Facebook as a tool don't bite into the rubbish on it because people a lot of people say oh i'm not going on facebook i hate facebook well that's okay but it's just a tool you don't have to get emotionally involved with it if you see something you don't like just scroll on um it's a very funny thing and i don't know if you found this but um social media can be such a time sucker so you've got to find a way in your own mind of realizing and conceptualizing these things as work tools and not using them as ways of uh, distracting yourself from stressors, um, uh, time wasting, uh, procrastination. And I know that we all do this, and this is why I'm talking about it right now. Okay, so let me let somebody in. So there are apps that you can get that will actually enable you to see how much time you're spending on your social platforms and it's quite an eye-opener so i would say have a look on on the app store get some of those installed onto your phone or your, your computer what have you because it will help you to understand that you are probably spending too much time on social platforms so take a step back look at how you can use each platform as a tool and only as a work tool and not as a as i say a distraction or a de-stress or what have you um, and just stop the scroll so that's that's really really important please please bear that in mind so um if you find that your audience is hanging out let's say on instagram well that's fine then you know start engaging on instagram using it again as a tool um these things are there just to serve us not for us to serve them uh, as much as the zuckerbergs and so on would love that to be the case they would love us to, to serve them but we don't have to and the power it's in our in our court we just have to recognize the game for what it is because you know they understand how to massively impact our um our usage 
and our brains and our psyche and so on. So, you know, just make sure that uh, you understand the game for what it is. I, I, I hope that that is useful. I really do, because it's important information. Let's also look at the wisdom of friends. This type of social proof is when people see their friends approve your product. So, for example, um, if people see their friends on social media using or liking your product or, or following you or what have you, that will impact them and they are likely then to start to follow you as well. And then we've got things like certification. This type of social proof is when you are given a highly recognizable and valuable stamp of approval by an authoritative figure in your industry. Examples include the blue check mark on Instagram or Facebook. Um, and of course, the CMA logo is our registered trademark on your website and literature. If you're a CMA member, you get the privilege of using our logo on your website, on your literature. And what that means is that you have gone through the hoops that it takes to become recognized and registered with the CMA. And as we know, that's not easy. It is, it's, it's a privilege. And, you know, because you've, you've done what you've needed to do to get your qualifications and, and to reach the standards that we require of our members, then you get the privilege of using that and it is recognized globally. So that again is social proof. So let's now dive into how you can use social proof to grow your business specifically in our field. Word of mouth is really important. It's the most compelling form, that should say, of social endorsement. Um, people trust word of mouth virtually implicitly. It is the highest level of, of social proof. Um, so it's, as I say, the most trusted form of influence. So how do we get it? Try this. Ask your clients to spread the word about your work at the moment of maximum happiness. There's a good reason that those words are in italics. When you're with your client, let's say, um, or you're teaching a course and you've got a stunning endorsement from somebody, somebody's come through and sent you the most amazing testimony, get right back to them. Um, or if you're with your client and they're sitting in front of you saying, I am so much better, my insomnia is gone, I can sleep through the night, I feel like a different person. That is the point where you go into that pattern and you'll say, thank you so much, please. It would be amazing if you could tell your friends and, and you know, loved ones about this because obviously I'm working hard to grow my practice and obviously you know how effective this has been and it's quite difficult to get the word out. So I really you know, do rely on people spreading the word. Please go out and be an advocate for me. And they will. Remember we spoke about Robert Cialdini? Well, one of the things he speaks about um, in his book is reciprocity. Reciprocity is, again, an incredibly primal drive, um, which works as follows. When you do something lovely for somebody, they, because of the law of reciprocity and because it is a survival mechanism to make our tribes work cohesively and, and for us all to stay alive in the face of the saber-toothed tiger and, and you know, terrible winters and, and all the rest of it. So we all stick together as a tribe and everything, you know, the social, the social atmosphere in the tribe works and stays, you know, the status quo is, remained, is, is uh, maintained reciprocity is incredibly important. Somebody does something for somebody, somebody does something lovely back for them. This is the reciprocity. And so when the person is at the moment of maximum happiness because you've done a brilliant, brilliant job at looking after them, that's when they will do something back for you and they will help you. And it, read the book, read, read Robert's book because it's just stunning. And it explains exactly how it works far, far better than I ever could. Testimonials. Now, I know you know about this, of course, and we've got de dedicated videos over on the CMA YouTube channel, the Complementary Medical Association YouTube channel, I should say. Um, and uh, go take a look at that video. It's really very good, and very useful, and it tells you exactly how to get testimonials. They are essential. They are the next on, on the sort of the hierarchy of the most um, compelling social proof. Testimonials are the next most compelling form of social proof. They are essential to you. Try this. Ask your clients to complete a testimonial form 
at the moment of maximum happiness. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's, you know, I'm going to keep saying this to you because that it works, truly it works. I wouldn't be telling you if it didn't, and it's evidence-based. So when the person has said to you, wow, do you know something? I'm just doing so well. Thank you so much. You've been such an amazing practitioner. Or, wow, my course is amazing. I loved it so much. I've just got so much out of it. That's at that point where you have got to say, here's my testimonial form. Would you be so kind? It would be so appreciated. It would help me immensely. It's really hard to grow a practice, grow a business, grow a course, whatever it is you're doing in this field. And so honestly, your comments would mean the absolute world to me. And uh, the people, they will do it. The law of reciprocity at play again. Also, try this. Create a testimonial scrapbook for your waiting room where people can browse it and um, you may have heard her tell, I, I have repeated this story in the dim and distant past, I haven't told this one for a while, but um, my homeopath, she specialised in helping women who had been told that they were infertile, sub, subfertile, oh your uh, fibroids are so bad you'll never have a baby, we might as well just give you a hysterectomy and all of that rubbish that women are told. Um, and so this particular homeopath, um, Linda Rozelle, she specialised in helping women fall pregnant. And um, anyway, she in her practice had picture after picture after picture after picture of baby, 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 all of these babies that had been born to these women who were told that there was no hope of them ever, ever conceiving. So that, my goodness, doesn't that set up a positive expectation in anybody who's sitting in that waiting room? Also, Linda had this wonderful scrapbook of fantastic testimonials. And it was, you know, just on the front of the book, it said, please take a look while you're waiting. And you'd flick through and, oh, Linda, you've been such an amazing practitioner, blah, 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 blah. This happened, this happened, this happened. And then the next one, oh, wow, Linda, that was really amazing. Thank you so much. I'm so much better, blah, blah, blah. It all helps. It all sets up an expectation of a positive outcome, uh, which is so helpful in practice, as we all know, it's vital, in fact. But, you know, all of these things will also help people to understand that they too should be creating a testimonial for you. Always useful. And reviews, let's talk about reviews. Now, really thinking about these from the perspective of going across search engines and social media. So try this, okay? Ask for reviews. At the moment of maximum happiness, again, I know I keep saying it, but I'm saying it for a reason. Tell your clients what you would really appreciate and which social platforms or search engines would be most useful for you. So obviously we've got, you know, Google reviews. Um, Bing, I don't know how many people actually use Bing, but you know, there we go. You can, why not? But you know, if you ask people, leave a review on Google because I think probably that is the thing that people are using most. Um, I use Ecosia, um, which is that uh, more sort of eco-friendly search engine. Uh, it's the one that plants trees every time you do so ever many searches uh, and it's lovely because at the top it gives you a little readout of the number of trees you've planted because you've done so many searches and um, so just figure out where people are your target audience is now you know that i've made videos for you on how to figure out who your target audience is who your avatar is who your niche what your niche is and so on if you're not familiar Go back and watch those videos. They are incredibly important, incredibly important for you for practice growth. So, you know, we don't just make things for the good of our health. We make it for the good of the health of your business. That's why we make them. So, again, we're asking for reviews, explaining to people at the moment of maximum happiness just how incredibly useful these are for you. Um, also, please, at this juncture, remember that if you ever get a negative review, you know, from time to time, you may get just somebody who's just having a bad day. Fine. If they're a genuine client, then by all means, get back to them, answer them and say, I'm sorry that you feel this way, but please contact me because um, I really would love the opportunity to, uh, to have a chat with you and see what we can do to sort that out. It's incredibly unlikely that you would ever experience anything like that. But if you did, that's the way to handle it. But let's say you get a mischief maker's negative review. From time to time in this profession, you know, you get the, 
representatives of big pharma thinking, oh yeah, let's have a pop at complementary medicine again, and, you know, try to take down as many practitioners as, as we can, and all that sort of pathetic playground rubbish. Um, and here's the way you deal with it. If it's somebody that's never come to you, then obviously your response, you must always respond. Don't just leave it out there hanging. Respond by saying, I'm sorry that you feel that way. However, we have thoroughly checked our records and we have no record of you ever having attended this clinic or this to school or whatever your business is. Um, it may well be that you've got the wrong person or it may well be that you're just having a bad day and wanting to lash out. And if that's the case, we really wish you well. And we're always here to help should you wish us to do so. So show them some empathy, show them some sympathy. Other people will look at that and go, wow, that person is a really kind person. That's a really nice practitioner. I would like to go to that person. This is why you never ever leave anything hanging. If you get a bad review, don't worry about it. It's not the worst thing in the world. The most important thing is the way that you respond to it. And also, the other thing is, we all know, don't we? We all, we all read reviews of things. We know that, let's say, everything else has got five star, five star, five star, and then somebody gives it a one star review. Well, we know, don't we? But that's probably not really representative of the actual service being offered, and that's probably just some really weird person that's lashing up because they're having a bad day, or they're you know there's some other ulterior motive so don't waste your time as i say by trying to be all places at all times find out where your your clients are coming from and where referrals to your website are coming from um, you can easily do that by putting a little google widget onto your website and um, or actually putting your url into google um, it, there's a sort of like sort of google, um I'm trying to think what it's called um ah. You know, my brain's gone. It'll come back to me. It's the words. It's on the tip of my tongue. Um, there's a system that Google have. Um, Google, Google, Google Analytics. <laughs> I knew I'd get there. Google Analytics. You just put your URL into that, and it uh, just works out where your traffic is coming from. You can go into that and take a little look and see which are the most common referring search engines. And so you can ask people to go and put a review for you on Google or Bing or, or whatever it is, Ecosia or whatever. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Further social proof strategies. Having uh, This is one that you can do. I'm only mentioning this because it's happened to me a couple of times recently and I found it very, very useful. So I just want to share information that's worked for me. Having industry experts take over your social media profiles can be a great way to tap into their influence and the positive association their followers have with anything they do. That's the whole halo effect. For example, when an expert takes over your Instagram account, for example, to post an edu post educational content, tell Instagram stories or go live, people who know him or her might like your brand more as her presence on your social media creates a positive influence on them. So one of the things I do is um, I do collaborations. And the best part of these collaborations is that they're often a win-win situation as industry experts also benefit by getting to reach your audience as well. So it's all about sharing audiences. And it puts us in front of people that we might not necessarily have actually been in touch with or might not have come across us. For example, I often do takeovers on Natural Health Magazine's Instagram. It highlights me to their audience and they get exposure to mine. Try this, for example, make a list of anybody that might want to collaborate you in this way. It's best if you have similar size audiences for this to work well. However, if you have a smaller audience than your collab partner, then you still may be considered if you're truly bringing something really valuable to the table. For example, let's say there's somebody hugely respected in the profession. They might just not have spent time building up their social profile. However, they may be so special and so respected that you may well still benefit from the halo effect by hosting them. So, for example, um, a person might be, let's say, CMA's uh, science and research director, Dr. Frank Sabatino. Frank does not do social media. He pops up on Facebook once in a while, but he absolutely makes no effort whatsoever. But by having him on um, various things like, like these tutorials or on 
our Facebook group, or we host him on our Instagram or what have you. Because he's so credible and so well known in his industry, regardless of his lack of activity on social media, we get a ton of viewers coming over because they will sort of hear by word of mouth and their friends will say, hey, Frank's doing this over there. Why don't we go and watch it? So you see, you know, it doesn't have to be massive numbers. So don't don't worry if you want to collaborate with somebody and you've got something hugely valuable to bring to the party, then go for it. Uh, it's really a very, very good strategy. So I'm going to stop sharing there and come back to the group. Has that made sense? Um, and are there any questions? And actually, we've got a lovely, a lovely size group. So if you wanted to, you can unmute yourself and, uh, and, and ask a question if you'd like to do so. Or if you're shy, you can put a question in the chat. Is there anything that I've not covered? Anything that needs further elaboration? Has this been useful? Um, let me know. Oh, thank you, Hazel. Lovely to see you. Look at that. Oh, Hazel, I can see your picture. That's absolutely beautiful. That's one of your lovely photo shoot pictures. That was a see. That was a brilliant thing to do. Um, Hazel spent time with a fabulous photographer uh, doing a, a lovely photo shoot, and so she's got all these gorgeous pictures that she can keep using on her website, her social media, and so on. Um, and they're very in keeping with the work that she does. Um, Hazel does this beautiful um, womb healing work, and among other things, and, and she works with animals. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's really lovely, Hazel. Um, I love to see those pictures of yours. I'm glad that you think it's, uh, thank you, Janet, it's very useful. Um, Jill, lovely Jill Swires says, many thanks, Janie, always useful. That's absolutely super, everybody. Um, uh, what I'd like to do is I would like to share my screen again. Um, let me just make sure I've got it queued up for you because there's something else I wanted to show you if I can. Um, let me see if I can find it. Aha, yeah, okay, let me just get that up. Um, yes, in closing, I won't keep you much longer, but I, something else I just wanted to show because I think you'll find this really um, valuable. Um, well, I'll come back to the, the, the questions and so on in a second. Please con, you know, consider writing your questions in if there's anything that you want clarified. Um, let me share my screen for you one sec. This is something quite amazing. Um, and I want to show, because it's the sort of thing that we could do um, with our groups and so on. This is the Ultimate Weight Loss Bundle. As you see here, it's $49. So this has been put together by a pal, an industry pal of mine, Chef AJ, who has a massive, massive social following. And AJ knows everybody who's everybody in the vegan, whole food, plant based vegan influencer field. And um, anyway, uh, AJ um, has put together, AJ and her friend Lissa have put together this bundle. Uh, cooking classes and other video content. This bundle is available very short time, February the 21st of March to so Feb, February the 21st to March the 2nd, only a few days. And so AJ has got all of us together and she said, guys, what I want you to do is to get your content, your book or your videos or whatever it is, and I want you to throw them in the bundle. And so the idea is that the audience sign up for the bundle for $49, but the bundle itself, and there's still stuff coming in, but the bundle itself is worth over $4,000 US dollars because you've got, uh, you've got uh, Dr. McDougall, you've got Stefan Esser, you've got Neil Bernard, you've got Robert Cheek, um, and, 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 I mean, really, absolutely, oh, our lovely Dr. Frank, you know, you've got so L. Oh, James and all of these different chefs and so on the focus on on this bundle is weight loss they, it always has to have a topic oh this is Melissa she's also doing uh, she's she's working with AJ on creating the bundle and so you've got meal plans you've got um, dressing plans you've got um, eating plans you've got um, ways to create um, whole food plant-based uh, meals and meal prep and blah 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 and so on and so forth um, I'll show you my my contribution was la 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 
So you can see they've got a ton of content here that we're giving away. This is my recipe book, and we've also got, um, oh, I did a weight loss hypnotherapy audio MP3 uh, for, it's called Effortless Rapid Weight Loss Motivation, which is what we all need, let's face it. Um, not necessarily weight loss, but we just all need motivation, I think, at this time of year. But look, so the reason I'm showing you this is because we could actually do something like this ourselves, you know, in our field in complementary medicine. If you've got a product, let's say a book or so let me stop sharing. Um, there we go. Um, if you've got a, a book or a product or a recording or some sort of download that it has to have financial value. That's because obviously we've got to be able to say, say this bundle, you, you know, ev hi everybody. Um, you, so what we do is we promote it to our audiences. So um, you know, I'm going to promote the uh, AJ's bundle to my audience. I've got, you know, uh, several tens of thousands of followers. Um, I will get a small commission for promoting the bundle, but that's not why I'm doing it. I mean, that's nice, but it's not why I'm doing it. Um, for those influencers out there who have millions of followers, and there are some of those in, in, in AJ's bundle, um, they will make a pretty penny from from doing this, um, but that's not what I'm doing because I, you know, my numbers just aren't aren't, aren't big enough. You know, I have tens of thousands, and so yes, it'd be nice, but you know, it's not not that much of a big deal. We we get a small portion of that forty nine dollars, but the reason we're doing it is because um, it's I'm sending this out to my audience. You would be sending it out to your audience, but it's getting your product, your book, whatever it is in front of all of those other tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who you would not normally get to be in front of. Furthermore, the other thing I've noticed, and I'm sharing this because um, I was quite surprised by this, and it was a benefit I hadn't realized would happen, is that AJ very cleverly has put together a Facebook group for all of us in the bundle, um, you know, the bundle contributors. And um, anyway, what we're doing is all saying, hey, who wants to do a collab? Who wants to come on my Instagram? Who wants to come on my YouTube? Who wants me to interview them? Who wants? And honestly, truly, it is just absolutely accelerating everybody's activities. So what I'm saying is, you know, for us in, in these tutorials, we can actually think if you've got ebooks, if you've got downloads, if you've got recordings, they must have a financial value. If you were interested, I could easily set up a, a bundle situation for us that we could then get out to our audiences, give them really good, high quality information. And it helps us grow our audience because we're all kind of giving each other the halo effect and the social proof effect. So anyway, that's something I wanted to throw out to you um, just to see whether it's something that you may be interested in. No pressure. But if you have got products and, and so on that you would like to throw into a bundle, then you know that's it and the good thing about the bundle is that um it's only on for a few days so it means that if you've got a a book or let's say for sale or, or a recording for sale on your website you're throwing it into the bundle just for these few days uh, people could come to your website and still buy it that's fine but you're not losing out you're not actually going to lose out because as soon as the bun bundle finishes you know you're back to selling your book you may even create new products for the bundle, which is what I've done. So, yeah, you know, it's it's just a really fascinating idea. I think it's very clever. Uh, so, uh, oh, yes, um, going back to uh, Hazel's lovely picture, her lovely photographer. Um, it's Alison, Alison Mathias was, an, was amazing doing this photo for me. It was also helpful and gets lots of lovely comments of them. I would recommend her as a photographer. Yes, it was a great collaboration. In fact, I've done pictures uh, with this lady as well. I've still got to do my headshots. I haven't had a chance to do my headshots. Uh, Hara, hi, Hara. Uh, she says, great networking collaboration ideas. Thank you, Janie. Great stuff. Okay, lovelies, we're just really at the top of the hour. So thank you so much for being with me today. Um, are there any questions in closing? Um, or just message me if uh, if you've got any other questions because I don't want to keep you too long. Also, I have to get out of my office today because they're doing some work on the heating system here, so which is nice, <laughs> nice in this weather. Okay, and thank you. And uh, and Laura says, uh, oh, that's a lovely idea. Thank you so much for the presentation. You're very welcome, Guy. You're very very welcome. Um, so I shall say to you all, have a lovely weekend. Stay warm. And just, you know, big, big, big hugs from me to you all. And thank you so much for being with me. All the very, very best. With love. Bye-bye.